Grace, mercy, and peace be yours today from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> from John chapter 16, verses 16 through 22. In a little while you will see me no more. And then after a little while, you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? And because I am going to the Father? They kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what, it, what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. So far the lesson. It was probably 1 a.m. or so at the Waffle House. You've probably seen those along the highway. We'd pulled in for a little something to eat before we went across the street to the La Quinta Inn to put our head on the pillow for the night. And there was an interesting waitress there. She was kind of the super waitress. She was very bubbly at one o'clock in the morning. Very funny, a little bit audacious perhaps. And this outgoing waitress uh, would, would make, uh, make jokes. But one of the things that sticks out in the mind in that particular Hoosier accent. You didn't know Hoosiers had accents, probably. <laughs> Here you go, honey. This will make your heart smile. Kind of fun. But you know what? It, it may bring a smile to our lips, but does pancakes or waffles bring a true smile to the heart? Maybe for some people it does. But you know, this life is racked with so many challenges, so many, so many difficulties, so many things that go on in our lives that oftentimes it is going to take a little more than pancakes and syrup to bring a smile to the heart. Although we're smiling this Sunday after our pancakes and eggs and potatoes and all the wonderful trimmings that were provided for Easter breakfast. But part of the smile that is on our heart this morning isn't just food, as nice as it was. What really brings joy and a smile to the heart is the resurrection of Jesus. Now that's something to smile about, isn't it? That's something that we can really take hold of. We know that it wasn't just a story or just a legend. We have the eyewitness accounts of hundreds of people that saw this man, Jesus, who died on a cross and there was no doubt about his death. Alive again. Walking and talking and eating and drinking. Not just a vision, but the real thing. You could lay hands on him. You could touch him. He was real. And that, and the knowledge of what that brings to you and me as God's people, is a reason for us to smile. Now, Jesus, in our reading this morning, tells his disciples that in a little while they will see him no more, and then after a little while they will see him again. And they're a little bit confused about what's going on. What does he mean? They talk about it with themselves. They don't really fully understand just what is about to take place. They cannot imagine the events that are going to take place during the Passion. They can't imagine the sorrow and the grief that will take hold of them as Savior is mercilessly scourged under Roman whips and nailed to a cross and left there to die. 
And as the world rejoices around this crucifixion, their hearts are torn in two, much like the curtain of the temple would be. Their hearts are sorely grieved. Think of the mourning that occurs, right? Peter, on the night of the trial, running out of the courtyard of the high priest in tears, grieving because he had denied his Lord three times. Think of the mourning that takes place as Jesus carries his cross along the Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering, out to Calvary, and he encounters the daughters of Jerusalem, and they're crying. And he says, don't weep for me. Weep for yourselves. If they do this when the tree is green, what will they do when it is dry? Mourning, suffering, and pain. What did Jesus say to them this morning? Certainly not something that sounds like Easter. I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve. And grieve they do. And grieve we do. Raw emotions. Who among us here has not grieved? Who among us here has not felt the pain of loss, of some sort of a loss? The loss of physical health. The loss of loved ones, perhaps, in the last year. Perhaps the loss of a meaningful relationship. Or the loss of an income or a job. We've all experienced in this past year and in years past what grief really means, what the pain of loss feels like. And we can relate to what those gentlemen and those ladies are going through as they watch their dear Lord die. We're not unacquainted with grief, are we? But the question is, what do we do when that grief comes? What in this last year has caused us to grieve and how do we face that grief? Jesus had an answer for his disciples, didn't he? He said to them this morning, in a little while you will see me no more and then after a little while you will see me. What does that mean? When I played sports, Sometimes the coach would be there to encourage us, you know, especially in our practices, a little more, push harder, a little more, push harder. When I was with the Navy, it was the same thing, just a little farther, just to the next hill, you're going to be able to make it just a little more, one more river to cross and then we're at home. And we'd encourage ourselves and we'd encourage ourselves and yet we didn't really know what a little while meant. What is a little while? How long is a little while? I'll be out of work for a little while, but I'm sure I'll get another job. How long does that last? I'm going to be in pain for a little while because my husband or wife has gone to be with Christ in heaven. They've gone home, and I know it's going to hurt for a little while. We don't know what a little while is. The disciples didn't understand what he was talking about a little while. But we have a wonderful Savior, don't we? We have a Savior who isn't surprised by anything that's going to happen, who has planned this from the beginning of time. Moment by moment by moment, he knows the full extent of what's about to take place, and our Savior knows exactly how long he means when he says a little while. And in this case, three days. Three days. And there they are, locked away, grieving, sorrowing, fear of the Jews, it says in the scripture. And then behold, behold, Easter morning. And the women are out before the light comes into the sky. And they're walking to the tomb with their spices and oils and the fresh linen. Just anticipating they're going to finish the work on their Lord's body. Not even thinking about the stone that stands between them and their Lord. And they get to the tomb and, and it's open. It's open. 
not remembering what he said, someone has stolen the body. To add insult to injury, somebody has taken the body of our Lord. And then the angels, young men in white, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. What joy those words must have brought. Don't be afraid. For Jesus the Nazarene, whom you are seeking, he is not here. He's risen, he's alive. I wonder what they did with those spices and oils. Did they leave them at the tomb in their joy and just run back to those apostles locked away? But their words seemed like nonsense. He is alive. Have no fear. We never ever have to have fear again. Don't be afraid when your health grows weak. Don't be afraid when death starts knocking at your door. Don't be afraid when your job dries up and the money goes away. Don't be afraid. Because you have reason to rejoice. Your heart has reason to smile. No matter what occurs in this life, nothing can touch you because your Lord is arisen. He's alive. And Jesus goes on this morning to say that your grief will turn to joy. He uses an interesting illustration here. A mother who's delivered a child. Moms, they have pretty easy time of it. Laying there, labor pains, they're so enjoyable. The cramps and the pressure and the delivery. After a woman has just had a baby, it's not a good time really to say, hey, what do you think of another child, honey? <laughs> but give it a week or two, right? Give it a week or two, and all of those memories will fade, and the sorrow and the pain and the labor will be a distant memory because she's taking such joy in the new child that has come into the world. Your grief will turn to joy. All of the sorrow, all of the sadness, all of the pain that you experience, and we're going to experience more pain this year as we did last year, all of these things will become for you a distant memory in view of the beautiful gift that God has given you, the resurrection to eternal life. And through the water of holy baptism, as Emma was received as a child of God, and as each one of us has been received into God's glorious kingdom, a part of his eternal family, your sins are gone because of the cross of Christ. Your sins and the guilt of them will never touch you again because Jesus has washed them away. And you stand before him, a new child, a new creation, righteous and holy. And that can never be taken from you. So when you face those things that life throws at you, all of the trials and all the tribulations, face them with confidence. Face them with joy because you know that where your Lord is, there you will be with him also. Because in the moment of your baptism, the moment you came to faith, you have eternal life already. And you will never die. The sorrow will be gone when we get to heaven. The joy that awaits will be ours. This world will vanish as if a distant memory. 
and we will be with Christ. What joy that will be. That should put a smile on our hearts. A smile that we can take with us wherever we go, whatever we do. Because no one, no one, nothing in all creation can ever separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen. Amen. Let's stand for a blessing. If you'd like to hear more on this or any other topic, please find us on the web at emmanuelnrh.net. Please join us for worship Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Bible class and Sunday school at 10.30 a.m.